world's changed. And you are right in the center of it. I don't know what's ahead, but all bets are off. Vadim Nemkov, buddy. This was another thing we, t- we warned everybody about, man. Now, some people picked Bader, and I raised put my hand in the air. I thought Bader might get it done when it was all, you know, time to tally it up. But Vadim Nemkov was easily the toughest guy that Ryan Bader had faced heading into Friday night. And sure enough, that proved to be a very, very true assessment and warning. He absolutely demolishes Ryan Bader, BC, stopping him inside of two rounds. And that referee, Kerry Hatley, there's some debate over the stoppage. I don't need to rehash it. But suffice to say, I think you'd probably agree with this no matter what side of that debate you're on. He gave Ryan Bader every possible opportunity to get out of that mess, and Vadim Nemkov would not let him. That dude is a beast. So the question for you, BC, is as follows. Where in your mind does Vadim Nemkov rank among all light heavyweights in any organization worldwide? A top five. Top five is a safe answer. I can't go anything further than that. I'd have to see him against the, you know, the, the top two or three, four guys in UFC. The run he's had coming in, you know, I wasn't fully woke to it. We talked about it last week. I'm like, you know, I remember this guy. I saw him beat McGarry. Well, he put together, you know, four wins under Bellator before this fight, but three against former champions in a row and finished all three of them. So that was the wake up call that he was something. Credit to you for kind of predicting this during last week's show and saying people need to wake up to this. The timing was funny, right? Ryan Bader comes on uh, CBS Sports HQ with me. He's talked to other outlets last week and is like, I'm the best light heavyweight in the world, right? You know, DC's gone. John Jones is gone. It is me. And I think at that point, uh, I, I didn't want to argue with him. I thought, you know, he might very well be. Look at the run Bader has been on. But, you know, you do have to go look back and say it had been three years since Bader had fought at light heavyweight when he won the championship by split decision over Phil Davis in his debut. He defended it once, and then he went into, you know, the heavyweight Grand Prix, and we never saw him again. So... There, is, there were sort of legitimate questions coming in that at 37, could Bader cut back down to 205 and be the same guy? But I don't think there's excuses built in on that, on how this performance played out. Vadim Nemkov, like, this was a monster wake-up call. He's at worst right there at the, at the edge of the top five of light heavyweights in the world, and he has a chance to be a force for Bellator because he, he finished Ryan Bader with absolute ease, and it's not that we hadn't seen Bader get knocked out before, but, Luke, we hadn't seen this confident, a well-rounded version of Bader as he became. That heavyweight Grand Prix, and you can argue the, the competition he fought or whatever, but he, he learned about himself in that. He grew. His boxing came to an all-new level where it was a weapon on par with his wrestling. We saw a complete fighter go in there, and Nemkov just take the wheels off and dismantle him. So shout-out to this young kid who's now taking Storm uh, – you know, a little bit of payback, by the way, because he's Fedor's boy. And, of course, Ryan Bader knocked out Fedor in dis- disastrous fashion to win that heavyweight championship. So a little bit of backdoor Sambo revenge. Um, yeah, I-, 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 I love this guy. Let me buy some stock on here, Luke. Uh, did you say you didn't want to unwrap the Kerry Hartley thing? Because I'm wondering, Luke, I'm a little worried about you. You're getting a little soft in all these stoppages. All Am right? I? Am Bader I getting a little well, I, 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 Okay, on Friday night, I hated it. I'm just be candidly, I hated it. Then I thought about it some more and rewatched it a few times, and I was like, yeah, okay, I don't hate it nearly as much as I did before. I mean, here's why I think you could have stopped it twice. One, when he first went down, it looked to me like a moment he was not really with it, and then he gets kind of hammer-fisted back into some sort of motion. The idea that he was in perpetual motion, I think, is overstated. Uh, and then the second time he gets knocked down, you could have called it waiting for him to just go limp as he races away from a guy he can't even look at. I I grant that that gives it some, again, it gives it total cleanliness, but the problem is it doesn't do much for, um, you know, he was never meaningfully in that contest. You get dropped twice with a guy like that on you, and especially if you kind of went limp for a second the first time, I don't know why it needs to continue. So I don't think it's an egregious stoppage as I did the Friday night. I even said as much on Saturday but I, 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 this idea of being like, oh, it was the perfect stoppage. Perfect if what you're waiting for is zero, um, zero controversy about whether he was going to be able to continue, right? If you want absolutely no doubt about it, yes, fine. To me, I don't think we necessarily need to wait that long. I just think there's unwritten rules. Like in baseball, there's the unwritten tie goes to the runner. Everyone's got a different strike zone. In MMA, 
You let the champion get his ass kicked a little bit longer to see if sure. he bounces back, all right, Luke? Sure. And all I need right now is Josh Rosenthal, a tattoo artist, and an ounce of weed, and the four or five of us can sit <laughs> down, and I can reteach you about the uh, Lesnar Carwin uh, lack of a stoppage. It was beautiful. It was wonderful. That's what, that Lesnar, Lesnar Carwin is one of my favorite fights. I love it. I love it. I love that fight. So I was fine with that stoppage, but let me throw that back to you. How good is Nemkov? What do you get oh, in the feel here? Uh, here's the thing. I think if you, okay, worst case scenario, worst case scenario, I think he beats everyone in the UFC from 11 to 15. Like that's the, that's the yeah. least you can say about him. Now from there, it's pretty debatable, right? Because you've got some guys on the come up. We've got two more coming up this weekend. We'll talk about them later. Uh, Alexander Rakic, he kind of fell short a little bit against Uzdemir, but he is just an absolute monster in that division. I think he's ranked inside the, outside the top five and the top ten. That would be an interesting fight for Nemkov, certainly. I wouldn't declare that Rakic couldn't beat him. I want to be very careful about that. So I think if you wanted to say worst-case scenario, he's top ten. Uh, in your view, I think that's probably the most charitable you could put him is in, right inside that top five, but being very careful. So I'm going to say somewhere from five to eight to me is probably where he sits right now. That doesn't mean he couldn't beat anyone above that. He probably could. I just think, you know, pumping the brakes a little bit on the unknowns here from Nemkov, uh, that, that's, you know, it's worth it to us. You know, what's kind of funny to me, though, the whole thing is I don't, I, I'm certainly no expert in Russian society, but to me, you know, it's, to, to see Fedor uh, backing this guy who was the combat sambo, four-time combat sambo world champion in Nemkov, I think that Fedor, you know, who's like a very orthodox Christian and from sort of the, uh, you know, he started off school, but sort of from a more, um, when you associate where people are from in Russia, he's sort of from that kind of, that kind of population. I, I always feel like there's been an uneasy alliance between people from that part of the country and then those absolute just killers all the way through from Dagestan and Chechnya and everything else. There's a big cultural divide there, if not even just a religious one. It's interesting to, that, that those guys have sort of taken over as the idea that we have about like what it means to be a top Russian fighter. And I don't think that should change. And again, this is sort of a smaller point of I'm just trying to make. But this guy, uh, Vadim Nemkov, sort of from Fedor's, I think, hometown, from his team, it seems to me like Fedor is trying to like dub this guy the next big Russian that we should all care about. And maybe we should. Maybe he actually is that kind of guy. It's just sort of interesting to see all the different parts of Russia have different uh, output in terms of talent as it relates to combat sports. And this part of it has been forgotten for a long time. Um, but here he comes, man. He is a special, special guy. He is young. He is hungry. He is, he is clever. He is smart. He is athletic. He is going to be a handful. I don't think Corey Anderson or Leota has a chance. Leota has a chance with this guy. All right, two things real quick here. Number one, if we get a chance to ever interview Vadim Nemkov, please don't ask him his favorite Russian uh, uh, books to read like you did when you sabotaged my favorite. Fedor wouldn't give me anything, right dude. I was that. grasping at straws. Number two, uh, Luke, uh, put yourself in Scott Coker's shoes. I think this is an important topic right here, real quick. You got a rising potential stud in Nemkov. You got a decently fun division at light heavyweight because Corey Anderson just flew in. You got Machida. You got uh, uh, Musasi. You got some names you could play with, move around from other divisions. Do you give Bader a second chance? Do you run this back? Or is it, just, is it just better off to say, hey, Bader, man, why don't you be the face of our heavyweight division? Let's find out who this kid is. Josh Thompson has, to me, been such a great addition to that Bellator commentary booth. I find him to be really, really credible as a speaker. He is smart. He knows what he's looking at. He and Big John, obviously, because they do a podcast together, they have great chemistry. He doesn't suffer Mike Goldberg very <laughs> very well either. So, like, he really is turning into a wonderful commentator. And so he noted, listen, Bader, 38 years old, he's way faster, way stronger, way better than these heavyweights. Go ply your trade up there it's a way to sort of preserve your status as an elite rather than you know this this guy in Nemkov man he's at a different level right now different age different stage of his career let him have light heavyweight you go to heavyweight I think that's the right call wow Corey Anderson it's gonna be a fun fight can't wait are you in This is our time. The world's changed. And you are right in the center of it. I don't know what's ahead. But all bets are off. Ah! 